Welcome to Reading English Aloud, Reading English Aloud Practice. The article is called Creative Libraries. New vocabulary words, nouns. Number one, structure, structure. Number two, availability, availability. Number three, determination, determination. Number four, upcycling program, upcycling program. Number five, residence, residence. Number one, structure, construction, shape, composition. Number two, availability being able to use or get something. Number three, determination. Focus to get something done. Number four, upcycling program. Reuse something to make something new. And number five, residents. People who live somewhere. New vocabulary words, verbs. Number one, transform, transform. Number two, offer, offer. Number three, check out, check out. Number four, transport, transport. Number five, improve improve. Number one, transform. Make a change in something. Number two, offer. Give. Number three, check out. Borrow a library book with a library card. Number four, transport. Take or carry people or goods from one place to another. Number five, improve. Make something better. New vocabulary words, adjectives, adverbs. Unusual, unusual. Number two. Remote, remote. Number three, permanently, permanently. Number four, original, original. Number five, eager, eager. Number one, unusual, not commonly occurring. Number two, remote, far away, distant. Number three, permanently, for always, unchanged. Number four, original, the first of something or the earliest version. Number five, eager, strongly wanting to do or have something. Creative Libraries. Today, even with the availability of the internet and online reading resources, people still enjoy the passion, creativity, and determination of the librarians who operate unusual libraries. Sarah Peters likes to kayak and read. She founded the floating library located on a raft in Lake Phelan, St. Paul, Minnesota. A raft is a floating structure, usually made of wood, that can be used as a platform in the water for boats 
or if you are as creative as Sarah Peters, a library. If you have a kayak, stand-up paddleboard, or rowboat, you can certainly visit it. Readers must first paddle to the raft in their own boat or by using a rented boat. Check out a book, read it from their boat, and return it. You are also allowed to take the book back to the beach and drop it in the return box on the shore. Depending on the weather, the floating library is open weekends in July and August. Louise Soriano is another creative librarian. He started the Biblioboro or Donkey Library in the South American country of Colombia. In remote areas of Colombia, this librarian uses two donkeys to transport books to readers. Luis Soriano believes taking books to people who do not have them can improve impoverished regions and even the country of Colombia. Philip Wong, the principal at Tung Tak Primary School, located in a remote village in Hong Kong, has also found a creative way to bring more books to his students. He has transformed a donated double-decker bus into a school library. It now sits permanently in the school's playground. The original school library was only large enough for seven students at a time. He found the bus through an upcycling program called Used and Retired Bus Program, sponsored by the Kowloon Motor Bus Company, KMB. The school also allows residents of the village to use the library bus. Libraries are an important part of a community. They offer free educational resources to everyone. From books on every subject, to author talks, to a librarian's wealth of information and, and enthusiasm for reading. They are very special places. And this is a picture of me. It's one of my favorite libraries in Hong Kong. It's a tiny, tiny library on Lama Island, and it has a beautiful sea view. And this is also an, another library that I really like. It's the library in Trail, British Columbia. It has a beautiful uh, view of the Columbia River and the librarians like to put fresh flowers on the, on the desks. So it's a, a lovely touch. And these are my sources. Discussion questions. When did you last visit a library? Number two, one in five adults around the world can't read or write. What do you think about this? Number three, where do you usually discover books? Friends, online, social media? Number four, what is your favorite snack to eat while watching a movie? And number five, which movie would you recommend to me? Just for fun, idioms about books. 
Number one, the oldest trick in the book. A trick so unimaginative and commonplace that it shouldn't deceive anyone. I can't believe she fell for the oldest trick in the book. We all knew she was just being scammed. To have your nose in a book. To be reading intensely. When I was a child, I always had my nose in a book. To hit the books means to study. I can't go to a movie tonight as I really have to hit the books. I have a quiz tomorrow. To read something into something to give something meaning or significance that may not be there. I think the problem with the internet is that people read too much into the comments that other people post. Book smart. Knowledge from reading or studying but lacking common sense. Being book smart will get you a good job, but you also need to be street smart to live in the real world. Every trick in the book, all available methods of achieving what's desired. She used every, tr every trick in the book to become CEO of this company. Thank you for reading English aloud with me. That's the end of this article, Creative Libraries. That was easy.